The commander in chief was a busy man this week. He started off with a little March madness, jetting off to Ohio with the prime minister of the UK for a basketball game. Then on Wednesday, it was back to the White House for a lavish state dinner, attended by members of the liberal media, as well as Hollywood elites like actor George Clooney. However, his leisurely week didn't end there. Today, the president began his day in Washington before jetting off to Chicago for two mega fundraisers. Then he traveled to Atlanta for three more. Add all those parties to the one being headlined by the first lady, and the Obamas will have raised over $5.6 million in one day. Jay Carney was asked about the president's campaign efforts at yesterday's briefing. Here's what he had to say. I still maintain that the president is uh, still spending the vast preponderance of his time uh, on his official duties. Although that's surely accurate, the president found an awful lot of time this week to focus on things other than energy policy, jobs, and Afghanistan. Here with more on all of this are former Hillary Clinton spokesman Mo Alethi and radio talk show host Mary Walter. Thanks, guys, for joining us tonight. So, Mo, he's done, at this point in the reelection campaign, twice as many fundraising events as President Bush had in 2004. And as Carl Rove pointed out today, he actually has less money in the bank. So are we seeing a desperate and failing effort to make that $1 billion magic number that they were talking about a few months ago that now seems to be disappearing? Well, first, I don't recall the president's campaign ever saying $1 billion. I think that was put out there by Carl Rove. But no, it was a chatter. Aside, it was a chatter it, from but, the Democrats. But putting that aside, uh, this president's never had to face uh, uh, no president has ever had to face what this president is facing with all the super PACs and people like Karl Rove coming in and helping uh, it's, it's the Republican It's always Karl Rove's fault. So, <laughs> uh, he, may, he makes it a lot easier. But this president has spent a lot more time governing than his predecessor did at this point in his, uh, in his presidency. When you look at... Twice as many fundraisers. And but, he has his own super PAC. He, he spent, says super PACs are a threat to democracy, but it's okay. But he, he spent hasn't. almost... Uh, his predecessor spent almost three times as many vacation days at this point in his presidency than, than President Obama did. So, so, look, this is a debate that is held every single election where you you have an incumbent. The opposition party always blames the, the incumbent for not spending enough time doing their job and campaigning too much. Uh, it's actually, in my opinion, a silly debate. It's an election year. President's run for re-election. He's doing his job. He's campaigning. The other side has been campaigning for a full year at this point. Well, this though. president never stopped campaigning. But let's, let's, you know, we've heard a lot about civility recently, and that's why we maintain only the highest standard of civility on this program. <laughs> but there was a kind of crazy moment at one of these Obama fundraisers, an entertainer named CeeLo Green, I believe, who must be very popular and hip because I've never heard of him ever you do, before. You know I've, I've got it on my phone. I, I'll play really, I, I don't think I want to hear it, but we're going we're gonna to listen to a clip anyway. Take a listen. So, Mary, I think you got you got the basic the basic idea. Now, am I impossibly old-fashioned and a fuddy-duddy that I think at an event, a fundraiser for the president, you shouldn't be using that sort of language, and you don't need to give anyone the finger? It, it makes you long for the days of Sinatra, doesn't it? Uh, no, I agree with you. You know, here's the deal. We've got the cool dad in the White House. You know, everybody wants to be the cool dad. Everybody wants to hang with the cool dad. And that only, like, gets you so far. And now we need an adult. Because that... That's just ridiculous. That's awful. That's terrible. I don't, I don't have a problem with, with CeeLo Green being there. I don't have a problem if he supports the president doing his thing. That's fine. But show a, a tiny little bit of class. And how do you not know that that's inappropriate? How does, how does he not know that that's wrong? And how did Obama's people not have a discussion with him about, dude, As somebody who has actually staffed events like this, I promise you Obama's people had that conversation with him beforehand. There are a lot of Obama staffers sitting there tonight that were at that event, head in hand, going, oh, I'm man. sure, Mo, you, you would have made him behave. You would have laid down well, the law. Hey, when the entertainers got the mic, nobody can make them do anything. Now, Mo, let me ask you about, we were talking about fundraising. A, a trope in the Democratic fundraising that they just can't let go of is this war on women. Practically every single email that goes out talks about a war on women. Throughout the entire history of this country, 
Never, ever has the government mandated that employers provide contraception coverage for free. This would be an entirely new program, and the people who oppose it are just protecting the status quo. How possibly can protecting the status quo, especially when it comes to religious organizations, be a war on anyone? Well, a couple things. Number one, I'm not a Democrat who believes that there's a war on women. I do think, though, that there has been a, a, a series of policies that have come out of the Republican Party that are detrimental to, uh, to a lot of women out there. You, you say that never before has the government ever mandated coverage of contraception. Never before has the government ever mandated invasive ultrasounds for women, as we saw just recently pass in Virginia and a well, couple plan, of other states are talking about. Planned Parenthood, when they perform abortions, my understanding, Mary, is they do perform ultrasounds for But never reasons. before has the government mandated well, it. When you're asking for the government to start footing the bill, you can't be surprised then if the government also starts mandating, mandating other things that you don't like. It's part and parcel of it. You can't well, just cherry pick. I don't want the government in my in my body in my decisions. I agree with that 100 percent. However, it is hypocritical to then stand there with your hand out and want the government to, to with a check to pay for your decisions. So you can't be surprised. Well, and this is what's going to happen with Obamacare. They're going to start making decisions that we don't like. But if they're footing the bill, they're going to say, "Hey, well, I let's have the be right clear. to do that." Let's be clear. You talked about never before has a government mandated uh, religious institutions to pay for contraception. They still aren't. They, they, are. Yes, they, they are. are. They, they are. are. They just, no, no, no. They're they asking are. the insurance companies to no, no, no. pay. But a lot of that's them are entirely, self That's entirely a fig leaf, and the bishops totally reject it. And if you're going to make a compromise with the church, go talk to the church about what they they want and forge a compromise if you can on that basis. This compromise is entirely it's, bogus. It's not just Catholics to realize, I think it's the Southern Baptists who are self-insured. So they are going to be paying, and it is not what they, that's against their beliefs, right, and they shouldn't be made to do we that. We got to go. Conversation can continue in the green room, but no F-bombs, okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> Up next.